how will we be working not just today, but more importantly, 10, 20, 30, even 40 years from now? I have a great panel here. Maurice Smith is with us, Mayor Dale Hendon of Kannapolis, Cecilia Thompson, and Representative Robert Rees. Mr. Smith, let's start with you. Time is precious. What's happening to our economy, and how does automation and high tech fit in with, with what you see out there in the real world? A little perspective. I work for the credit union industry. This is my 36th year of being in the financial services business. What I have seen in terms of changes in financial services is more emphasis on data, technology, and analytics. So it used to be a time that we concentrated mostly on the back office, just handling checks, processing credit card payments. But now we have to be very adept at understanding the information our members use and need and providing services to match the, their, their communities. It's good to have a banker, credit union representative here because on the stage earlier this morning, they said one of the top most endangered jobs for replacement by automation, whether it's software analysis or robot, yes. however you want to call it, banking sector, cashiers and lawn officers. Are you feeling pressure to go automated and go online with those kinds of services? Well, actually, we're feeling pressure to do both because consumers want to have automation. They want technology and they want access to service 24 hours a day. But when something goes wrong, you want a live human being to talk to that's going to have empathy, understand your situation, and explain it to you. So we don't have the luxury of just concentrating in just one area. I need people who have great people skills and great technology skills. Mayor Hennett, mayors love to cut ribbons on new big high-tech factories, but high-tech <laughs> factories don't necessarily mean anymore a lot of human jobs. Could be a lot of revenue. How do you balance economic growth against getting your people who are jobless a job? Well, we are the home and Kannapolis of the North Carolina Research Campus. And as a part of that, we do a lot of research in nutrition and food safety and stability. As a result, we need computers, we need technology. So technology jobs are extremely important on our campus. In addition to that, we're recruiting and looking for an advanced technology center because we're recruiting a manufacturing facility from California. And as a result of that, they will be all high tech, all advanced technology equipment, laser cutting and all those kinds of things will be involved in our efforts. So we cannot do without technology in today's world. There was a panelist up here from Fayetteville, started the ICAR. He was talking about the safety and it's a high tech job for yeah. Cumberland County, but he noted the culture. It's a very uncomfortable comment in my opinion when he said, hey, why won't people come to work? They won't come, they won't show up for the training. They won't do what it has to be done to survive in this 21st century. So you can bring high tech to your city. How do you persuade the people? Get that training, stick with it. It's hard, but there's gonna be a good paying job at the other end of it. Just exactly that. The high paying job is what attracts them. And, and what we find out is because they've heard all about the layoffs that occurred in the past, they're really ready for a solid performing job. Cecilia, you're out of Greensboro, and I've, yeah. I've done stories in Greensboro, a lot of experimental artisan shops and things trying to figure out a way to bring a job to Guilford County. What's the lay of the land in, in that Sure, part well, we have a tremendously growing uh, ecosystem around entrepreneurship, really from early stage entrepreneurs that may have a small idea. We're also a city of makers, and so um, from our roots in textiles to now making uh, aerospace engineering and, and Honda jets, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so we're really trying to um, capitalize on, on that maker community in Greensboro. We have early stage entrepreneurial spaces. We have maker spaces that are full of um, those laser cutters and 3D printers, and so how we lean back on our roots historically and really look towards the future in terms of creating new jobs through creativity, through innovation, and sort of those roots of our, make, of our maker community. It was downtown and they had the forge, I think, yeah. was one of the maker spaces, mm -hmm. with a guy making beehives. I mean, do you expect people to, these artisans, to create full-time jobs based on these kinds of spaces, or is it designed to get your idea, prove you can sell something that you make, and then maybe scale it down the road because we glorify these app makers and people who are worth billions of dollars overnight. And there's a big difference between that sure. and, and people in Greensboro making artists and crafts. I think it can be twofold. I think there's an enormously growing Etsy community in Greensboro of people that are maybe stay-at-home moms or um, other kinds of workers that may not want a traditional day-to-day -day, um, nine-to-five job. On the other side, we're seeing people scale products. There was a, um, a gentleman 
immigrant gentleman who invented a new doorstop in Greensboro because he had been working as a, cust as a custodian at a local furniture fa uh, manufacturing space. And so we're seeing both sides of that um, and really trying to find that sweet spot to help everyone. Representative Reeves, you have to have all the answers. You're a legislator. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that entrepreneurial spirit, Greensboro, other places, is really alive and well, but it's one person at a time, maybe a few jobs at a time. How do you take that and take it mass? How do, you, how do you get us all relevant, ready for the 21st century? Go well, I think the biggest thing, especially with our job, is we got to get our educational system ready. And you got to make sure that that custodian that's sitting at a spot in Greensboro who has a great idea has an opportunity to express that. And one of the ways he gets to express that is through our public education system, and specifically our community college systems. I'm blessed that I represent uh, two counties that have a tremendous community college system with Central Carolina Community College. What is it about the community college system? We're on UNC TV, so we're part of the university system. I must divulge that. But at the community column, I'm hearing that over and over and over. It seems that's where this starts to get people ready for the 21st century workforce, or at least the ones that are affected. Am I right or wrong on that? You're absolutely correct, because the community college system is ready to be accessible economically, and they can also change immediately. If a company comes in and says, look, we want to locate in Greensboro, we want to locate in Kannapolis, but we need workers that have this specific skill set, the community college can go ahead and set up a curriculum and have it ready to go immediately. Mr. Smith, you know, how do you... you know, how, Ahead, you know, man. Kelly, the first two questions we get asked when a company is interested in coming to our community, what kind of workforce do you have and where are my kids going to go to school? So we have to have good school systems to help make it work for all those companies to come to our community. But do you have a good answer for that? Pardon? Do you have the good answer for that or do you yes. admit the struggles that a lot of counties are having with whether it's school funding, whether it's job, uh, job readiness? Or do you have to paint that rosy picture to let them come to town and check it out? No, well, they always come and check it out. But I'll also tell you that Kannapolis, because of the loss of the mill, we have had workforce development for a decade in our community and we have turned some expertise in workforce development. We had no choice. Mr. Smith, how, does, how do credit unions and banks work in that environment of transition? Because banks just, they don't like to lend risky money. But you need risky money to make the jobs and to make the small businesses. Yes, every loan that we make has some measure of risk in it. But we just have to have measured risk and just make sure that the loan is going to be paid back, first of all. But we want to make sure it does some good for the consumer, for the business owner, for the community. So it's a balance act that we have to weigh in every decision that we have to make. Celia, how do you see the artisanship you're talking about out of Greensboro with the high-tech discussions we're seeing now where you can make a robot that can make a pair of shoes or can build that piece of furniture. Will, will they compete? Will they not? I think there's tremendous opportunity for collaboration between the research base that's happening on our seven colleges and universities to that maker community and support systems from our local community college. I think um, the, the possibilities are really endless in terms of how do we connect people who are skilled on each side to really think about the future of the workforce and future of business and commerce in Greensboro. Representative Reeves, we can talk about education funding as if money were no object, but money is a big object. Yes. With what we have right now, what do we need to do to get the community colleges ready to go, to have people ready to work today and to get them working 20 years from now when the competition between man and machine is really fierce? Well, again, what we've got to do is make sure that they stay accessible as far as the tuition fees, things of that sort. But number one, we've got to make sure that we're competitive in getting the teachers who can make this workforce competitive. If they don't, if we don't have those teachers, then we're not going to be able to teach the students in a way that we want. And those jobs and those communities are going to go to other places in other states. What does it mean to teach the students the way that we want? What does that mean? Is it reading is fundamental? Is it reading, writing, arithmetic? Is it coding? What is it with the final 20 seconds that we have here? To learn the concepts and to learn how to think and learn how to make good decisions, whether you know the particular skill that is necessary is beside the point. You can always learn that skill, whether it's math or science or whatever, as long as you can think critically. Panel, thank you so much for your time. Let's now go back to the stage. 2016 Emerging Issues Forum Future Work continues.